Jakob, was ist hier los? Ähm, mein <lacht> Schaltauge ist verbogen und vielleicht auch das Schaltwerk beim Com Berlin. To answer Jovan's question from the beginning, what is going on here? I am Jakob from Flamingo Fixed and I once again tried to participate in a gravel event and once again the outcome was not quite as planned. But let's start with the event first. The KO in Berlin is a multi-day gravel event taking place on the so-called Arkenberge, which is a former landfill and happens to be the highest point of the city. Actually, it's multiple races in the same location, combined with music, food court, camping, bonfire, socializing and probably a lot more. You might even call it a bike festival in a way. Due to being a dump until not so long ago, that probably still carries some risks and uh, needs certain level of monitoring. The hills are fenced in and usually closed to the public. The event that starts first and lasts the longest is the so-called Ultra KOM. You've got 24 hours on the track to ride as many loops as possible and ideally complete an Everesting or even go beyond. It doesn't really comply with the rules of Everesting because it's a combination of multiple climbs and it is a loop, but it's at least as hard because also it's on pretty rough gravel roads. During the night, the Ultracom participants have the track to themselves and try to clock in as much climbing as possible before the other events start. In the morning, spectators, friends, family and participants of the other races arrive and the registration for the next races starts. Second race to start is the so-called Team Everesting. Teams of four riders try to climb a combined 8,800 48 meters on the track as fast as possible. The team Everesting is in sudden death mode, which means as soon as one team reaches the 104 combined laps, the race ends for everyone else. Everyone has to finish their last lap and then leave the track. The Ackenberger Crit is the fastest event of the Com Berlin. It's basically a cyclocross race where the starters have one hour on the track and try to complete as many laps as possible, with the first person that crosses the line with the most laps to win the race. While all the other races are going on, the Ultra KOM participants are still on the track, giving it all, climbing these dusty gravel tracks and trying not to lose focus on the slippery descents. At least if they have the energy and motivation to keep pushing and if their bikes don't fail. I went to Berlin pretty spontaneously, missed the first train and almost wasn't allowed to enter the second train because it was so overcrowded. Train personnel found me a spot where I could squeeze in with my bike and about four hours later I arrived in the north of Berlin at the closest train station. Since I hadn't really prepared anything, I went to Aldi real quick to get chocolate peanuts, potato salad and a couple of buns and then went to the location that was still a couple of kilometers away. I arrived at the Arkenberge at 7.58 and the Ultracom that I wanted to participate in started at 8. So you could say I was kind of late. I registered, got dressed, ate a bun and started the race about 24 minutes after everyone else. In my 12th lap, after descending the first hill, I wanted to start pedaling again. Pushed hard, but the pedals didn't turn and there was resistance instead. I got off the bike, tried to figure out what's the problem and recognized that the rear derailleur was looking weird and the mag hanger was bent. I guess all the shaking on the speedy descent made the chain jump or get twisted or probably something got stuck in there, a pebble or a stick or something. I went the direct way downhill through the tall grass to get to the Velobunder service station at the base of the climb and try to get it fixed. But after some minutes, we figured that there is no quick fix to the problem as not only the derailleur hanger was bent, but also the chain itself was bent. And the bolt of the rear derailleur for some reason wouldn't turn anymore. Luckily, one of the sponsors of the event is the bike company Bergamont. They had a stand there with a couple of test bikes and offered me to lend one of their bikes so I'd be able to keep going. We switched pedals my light and my computer mount over to the Bergamont bike and set up the saddle height. When I wanted to keep going, I recognized that I have no idea where my phone was. I used it on the hill as a flashlight when my bike stopped working and hadn't seen it since. Seems like I hadn't properly put it back in my jersey pocket when rolling downhill and I found it in a ditch, got to the new bike and then kept going. 
all these mishaps took about another 90 minutes of my riding time after already starting almost half an hour later than everyone else. Even though the spare bike was a decent bike, I knew right away that it didn't hit me well enough to keep riding on it for 20 hours. So after another 1260 meters of climbing or a little bit over two hours of riding later, I was getting a bit cold and started to feel that the setup is not ideal. I took a break to charge my light, have the dinner and lunch that I missed due to being in a rush all day and refill my water bottles, but ultimately decided to end the night there and put up my hammock. I warmed up at the bonfire, chatted with a couple of people and then went to bed. The night was comfy, but with the music in the background and people walking and riding around all night, I didn't really get much sleep anyways. In the morning I went back on the bike for a couple of faster laps in daylight, but mainly watched other people's races and enjoyed the event as a spectator, together with Robert who eventually arrived at the venue. The whole trip ended the same way it had started. I took the derailleur of my bike to temporarily transform it into a single speed and be able to ride the 7 kilometers back to the train station. I left the event a bit early so that I could get back home to Leipzig the same day, but at the train station where I had arrived not even 24 hours ago, no trains were going towards the city center because of construction works. That meant I had to ride another 10 kilometers with the temporarily fixed bikes and all my luggage to get to the next train station from where trains are going. And then I had to wait at the main station for an hour and hope that the train was not too full because it was the last train for the day. I left the event at 6.30 and I was at home close to 1 a.m. in the morning. On a medium day when I ride my bike from Berlin to Leipzig with less luggage of course and a properly working bike it takes me less than six hours that it took me with the train now. Das ist der Anspruch den ich formuliert habe. Ich möchte dass die Bahn wieder richtig pünktlich ist. All in all, it's a pretty cool event for both spectators and also as a participant. I would probably give it another try, maybe in the team of resting that also looked really cool. I think it's a bit hard to reach by public transportation. As I said, the closest train station is seven kilometers away. Um, so you're really, really like on the outskirts of Berlin. Big thanks to the organizers to making this event happen, the Velobande to try to fix my bike even though it didn't work, to Bergamont for lending me a bike for half a day and to Tjorven Geschwindigkeit who was standing on the sidelines cheering every time I came by for the first couple of hours. That was amazing. I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, you can give it a thumbs up or if you didn't then give it a thumbs down and um, subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. See you in the next video. Goodbye. Thanks.